Hi everyone. Today we are going to cover the 8th unit of NCRT Geography Class 6, India, Climate, Vegetation and Wildlife. So let's begin. We often get confused with climate and weather. Sometimes we even think they are same, but they are not. Weather is a short term condition of atmosphere, whereas climate is said to be the average of weather that was extended over time along the years in a particular location or a region. We have studied about India's physical feature in our last lesson. The grass and Kargil in Jammu and Kashmir are too cold with contradiction Bikaner and Jaisalma deserts of Rajasthan are extremely hot. Indian coastal plains like Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai have moderate climate, neither too cold nor hot, they have a humid temperature. Masandrom in the state of Mahalaya receives the world's highest rainfall whereas Jaisalmer never received rainfall at all in a year. The climate of India is of monsoon type. The term monsoon is taken from the Arabic word mausum that means season. As India is in the tropical region, the rainfall is often brought by monsoon winds, otherwise said as seasonal winds. The Indian agriculture is dependent on the rainfall. We should never waste the water as every drop counts. Higher the rain, higher the crop. Lower the rain, lower production. India have four major seasons, summer, winter, rainy and autumn. Also said as southwest monsoon and retreating monsoon. In winter, sun rays are often slanting, so the temperature is quite low. During summer, the sun rays fall directly on the region, so the weather is hot, dry winds call loo, blow throughout the day. Next is Southwest Monsoon. It's set an onset season before monsoon. Wind blow from sea surface to land surface at this time. These winds carry moisture and when they hit the mountain walls, rainfall occur. Next come Retreating Monsoon. During this time, wind on the mainland return to the sea. South India, mainly the states of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, receives its highest rainfall. Now, let's see about the natural vegetations of India. Indian vegetation is classified into five types. They are tropical rainforest, tropical deciduous forest, thorny bushes, mountain vegetation and mangrove forest. Tropical rainforest receive heavy rainfall and they are very dense. They are said as evergreen forest as they shed leaves at different times in the year. Important species of trees that were found here are mahogany, ebony and rosewood. They are found in Andaman and Nicobar Island and in certain parts of northeast and also in the west of western Ghats. Next comes tropical deciduous forest. A major part of our country has the forest of this type. They are less dense and they shed leaves only at a particular time in the year. Major trees are Sal, Peak, Peepal, Neem and Sisham. They are found in Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and in some parts of Maharashtra. Next comes thorny bushes. They have spine-like structure and they are seen in dry areas like desert. Some important species of this forest are cactus, kair, babul and kikar. They are found in Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, Gujarat and on east of Western Ghats. Next come mountain vegetation. They are found in mountainous region and the species vary from height to height. Between the height of 1500 to 2500 meter, most of them are conical in shape, otherwise said as coniferous forest. Important trees of these forests are chayal, pine and deodar. These are seen in Himalayas and Western Ghats. And the last comes mangrove forest. These are of small shrubs or trees that grow in saline water. Saline is nothing but a salty water. They are found in West Bengal, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Sundarbans. A well-known species known as Sundari is from Sundarban and the region is named after this. Now let's see why forests are important in the ecological point of view. First and foremost, plants give us oxygen and absorb the carbon dioxide. The roots of trees bind the soil together and with this soil erosion are prevented. They provide food in the form of crops, fruits and vegetables. We even eat the flowers and leaves of certain plants. 
they give us timber with which we make furniture they give us cotton in which we make clothes also they provide us many medicinal herbs that treats various diseases forest are also the home to wildlife if we disturb their ecosystem they enter into the land of human settlements which leads to human animal conflict we should protect the existing trees and should also plant more for a healthier life government also initiated many special programs like van mahotsav it's an annual one week tree planting festival across india the wildlife week in india is celebrated in the first week of october tiger is a national animal and peacock is a national bird one horn rhinoceros and elephant are seen in the forest of assam elephants are also seen in the state of kerala and karnataka Asiatic lion is seen in the Gir forest of Gujarat likewise camels and wild asses are seen in one of Kutch and Great Indian Desert snow leopards wild goats and bears are seen in Himalayas these are only few we have many more species in Indian, in Indian wildlife also india have a rich bird life many species of birds like pigeons myna geese bulbul are seen Also bird sanctuaries are built to give them their natural habitat sanctuaries also protect them from hunter also many varieties of snakes are seen in india due to deforestation and hunting many species die every year and even some become extinct also we can conserve the wildlife when we refuse to buy things like horns skins bones and feathers of animals Also national parks sanctuaries and biosphere reserves are developed to protect the wildlife project tiger and project elephant are among the conservation initiatives of government and they were aimed to protect their species from extinction In the last few decades many species became extinct few examples are dodo pyrenean ibex and woolly mammoth After the extinction of dodo a species of tree said as acacia stops regenerating completely whenever a species become extinct it leaves a scar behind that affects the entire ecosystem it is highly crucial to protect our wildlife so we have come to an end hope the lesson was useful and i will see you in our next good video